Now, probably the most common way to access a large language model is via some kind of chat interface. Think ChatGPT or Bing or something like that. In fact, even if you use a web browser like Brave, then it kind of it gets built into the web browser. It's called Leo. You can ask it. You can do that on Android. You can ask it. So lots of manual ways where you type in something uh, and it kind of processes it. But another important way of accessing a large language model is via a programming API. So you can use languages like Python or C, whatever is your language of choice, and you can talk to it programmatically and get a reply back. And I do have some videos about how you can access, for example, ChatGPT via uh, Python here on this channel. But one big difference is that a lot of these APIs are actually paid for. So you have to pay depending on how much you use it. So in this video, I want to look at how that is charged because there's a thing called tokens. There's a difference between the input tokens and the output tokens. And I also would look at which is the actually the cheapest large language model to use if you want to use an API. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. OK, so the cheapest uh, large language models that you can access via API. Now, why would you want to access these things via API rather than just using the web chat uh, interface or maybe an app on your phone? Well, there are lots of reasons. For example, let's say you've already got an existing system of some kind and you want to integrate the abilities of an LLM into that system. Well, an API allows you to do that. You can take your existing database, your existing customer database, your existing information systems, and then you can apply uh, some LLM technology to that just by calling out from Python or C or whatever uh, language you want to the LLM and then getting back an answer. It's also great, of course, for automation. That's what I use it for myself personally. If I've got stuff that I need to automate, so maybe I've got some text and I want to analyze that text or summarize that text or translate that text or generate some other content from that text that I can do it just using uh, an API. In fact, I've written a couple for myself personally, use a couple of uh, GUIs. When I just type in some stuff that I want to type in, I know what database I've got, I know what data I've got, and it will go ahead and interrogate the LLM for me and come back and show me the answer inside my nice little, uh, little interface there. Also the same if you want to do summarization, translation for example you're mo monitoring social media feeds or you've got market research information you want to have a look at the language are people happy are they unhappy with the product are they complaining are they praising it and so on and then also if you've got large amounts of data whether that could be pdf files that you want reading or it could just be raw you know comma separated data xml data whatever and then you want the llm to look at that data and give you some results you don't want to be cut and pasting all that stuff into uh, you know, into a, a chat window. You want the an API to do it for you. Now, all these APIs, they are priced per token. So what is a token? A token is not a word. It's the part of a word. And that's because the way the uh, LLM learns from all the text it's been given, for example, it might, you know, have the word shop, shops, shopping. Okay, so it can see there, there are three different uh, complete words, but they all have shop at their root. And then depending on what it would be doing, it would predict what needs to come next. It would predict the word shop needs to come. And then it would know whether it was shops or shopping or whatever. So it's token. In fact, it really, a token is about four characters in English, three quarters of a word. A uh, hundred tokens is about 75 words. We'll express the other way around. One or two sentences is about 30 tokens. A whole paragraph would be about a hundred tokens. And uh, 1,500 words is about 2,048 tokens. Now, the API usage is quoted in per million tokens. So, obviously, the LLM, the, the system behind it, uh, it can read how many tokens you've used, kind of add that up for the billing department, and then it measures it, charges you per, per million. Now, there are two types of uh, tokens. There are input tokens and output tokens. The input tokens are the prompt and any data that you give it, and the output tokens are how much uh, information is generated by the LLM, how much content is generated by the LLM. Now, why is input token pricing important? Well, if your use case is input heavy, for example, you want to summarize large amounts of text, or you have data that needs to be analyzed, you're translating text, language, or something like that, then you're gonna have input data that is heavy, that's large. So your prompt plus your data is going to be quite big. If your use case is just 
create a blog post about X, Y, Z. Well, that's quite short, just a few words, not very many tokens. And so your input tokens aren't going to be uh, an issue really. In fact, negligible in the overall pricing. Okay, so here we see the pricing. So I've got some of the main large language models here on the left-hand side, and this is sorted by input price. So the cheapest is the Claude 3 uh, Haiku API. That is uh, the absolute cheapest quarter of a dollar, these are all prices in dollars, quarter of a dollar for a million tokens, input tokens. Then you've got ChatGPT 3.5 uh, Turbo, which is the one I use personally a lot uh, because just the input and the output tokens are so cheap. Here's the input token you can see. Now after that, once you start to go beyond ChatGPT 3, you can see the prices start to climb. So Mistral, uh, small and medium, $2, $2.70. Claude 3, Sonic $3, Mistral Large $8 per million tokens, ChatGPT 4, Turbo $10 for uh, a million tokens, Claude 3, Opus $15, and ChatGPT 4, $30. Now, OpenAI have done a thing here, they really want people to use ChatGPT 4 Turbo, but they don't switch off the old services because that might break people's applications. So if you are using the old one, it's going to cost you more. Uh, because they're kind of keeping it around as you know legacy, even though it's ChatGPT4, it's not really legacy, but they're keeping it around as legacy and it's costing money, so they're charging you more. So you switch, switch your applications to ChatGPT4 Turbo, but you can see here the prices range a lot there from you know under a dollar for the smaller, faster models up to thirty dollars. Now, likewise, your output token pricing is important. If you'll use cases output heavy, for example, content creation, bulk generation, summarization, language translation, then the number of output tokens will be large. If your use case is trend analysis, simple yes, no, sentiment analysis, you know, is this customer happy or unhappy? And then you might have an input that's, you know, 300 words, 300 tokens. Okay, but then the output analysis will be happy. Well, that's one or two tokens. So again, it depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're output heavy, then that's where you're going to have to be careful about which model you choose for the output pricing. And so here again, the same uh, list of LLMs, but now priced by uh, output price. Now notice the output price is greater than, in, than the input price because this is actually making the LLM do something, run and generate something. $1.25 for Claude 3 Haiku, $1.50 for ChatGPT 3.5. I said I use that a lot because look at the pricing. I must really try out uh, Claude 3 to see if it's any better from that point of view. And then suddenly it jumps $6, $8, $10, $15. And then look at this, Mistral Large, $24 for a million tokens. GPT 4, $60, and I remember that saying that's really the legacy. You should switch to ChatGPT4 Turbo. But look at this, Claude 3 Opus, $75 for a million tokens. So you really, you know, you want to be careful which model you choose. Obviously, there's the functionality involved here as well. Does it do, does ChatGPT 3.5 do what you want? In my case, because it's sentiment analysis, because it's uh, summarization, that kind of stuff, it does a good job at it. If there was more, more complicated stuff, maybe it wouldn't do such a good job at it. And so you have to pick your model there accordingly. Okay, that's it. I'd love to hear in the comments below, do you use a large language model via an API and which model do you prefer to use? Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.